I often talk about the dangers of social media, particularly how easy it is for misinformation to spread on outlets like Twitter and Facebook, and how easy it is to push someone into a bigoted echo chamber and then radicalize them in places like YouTube and Reddit. I don't often get a chance to talk about how great social media can be, uh, at least anymore. It doesn't seem relevant. In the before times when people could gather indoors in groups without fear of catching a deadly disease, uh, and when skeptic organizations didn't think I was the antichrist for suggesting that they treat women like humans, uh, I used to give a talk about how social media isn't necessarily all bad. For instance, there's research that shows sites can build algorithms that are able to detect and remove bots that try to spread what is now known as fake news. We have a term for it now because none of the social media sites decided to act on that research from 2010, 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, some of that research, like at Indiana University, led to the creation of Truthy and other programs that could root out misinformation. Those systems worked so well in part because social media provides researchers with an absolutely bonkers amount of data like an unending stream of information that also allowed scientists to do really cool studies, like this one from last year that found that in the aftermath of a 7.1 earthquake hit hitting Mexico, people use social media to share important information and to receive help. Through analyzing millions of posts on Twitter, Facebook, and other outlets, the researchers found that users actually developed their own techniques to sort false information from true. They also found that a subset of responsible users would highlight information that was particularly important as well as being true. And then they would take the time to spread that information from one social network to others. Anyway, that massive amount of data being freely shared has led to a lot of cool studies in recent years, and not all of them about how misinformation spreads. This week, I learned about one that honestly filled me with this weird mix of awe and also horror. Um, Italian researchers discovered that social media posts in December of 2019 and January of 2020 contained a warning about the COVID-19 pandemic before it exploded across Europe. The new paper published in Nature's journal Scientific Reports shows that before the World Health Organization officially recognized COVID-19 as a serious threat, people across seven European countries speaking seven, seven different languages were posting about pneumonia at a rate far above and beyond such posts from the previous five years. The researchers chose to look for mentions of pneumonia because that is one of the most dangerous results of a COVID-19 infection. And in fact, the World Health Organization originally labeled COVID-19 as cases of pneumonia of unknown etiology. And because the flu season from last year was particularly mild, meaning that cases of pneumonia and therefore people discussing it on Twitter should be lower compared to previous years. Also, they took care to filter out any mentions that referred to the growing epidemic in China or other news reports. After establishing that every country except, strangely, Germany uh, saw a significant increase in mentions of pneumonia well before organizations and governments acknowledged COVID's presence in Europe, the researchers then dug into the data a little more deeply, finding the location data for more than 13,000 users. During December and January, the preponderance of users discussing pneumonia on social media were residing in areas like Lombardy, Madrid, and Paris, areas that were about to be the earliest epicenters of COVID-19. To check if all of this was just a fluke, the researchers then went back and they did all of the same things, but with the phrase dry cough instead of pneumonia they got the exact same results. An overall large increase in discussion of the symptom and elevated discussion in areas that were just about to become COVID-19 hotspots. 
Finally, the researchers did all of that again with the word coronavirus, sort of as a control, because coronavirus wouldn't necessarily correlate to someone experiencing personal symptoms of unknown origin, but would most likely be directly related to the news of the soon-to-be pandemic. Sure enough, they found that discussion of coronavirus was much more uniformly spread across the various countries and didn't correlate to any hotspots. I love this study because it's one of those things that in retrospect, I'm like, oh, of course. Yeah, of course that's true. And yet it still feels revealing, like pulling the sheet off of a new work of art. Like, just think about that. Humanity had the ability to see that something was about to go very wrong, but we didn't know where to look. We didn't know what signs to look for. We just went about our business until it was too late. It's like a good film or play or book with dramatic irony. That's when the audience knows something important that the characters uh, do not know. Like when we watch that idiot Romeo kill himself, even though Juliet is not really dead. Spoiler alert if you've been distracted since the 17th century. The researchers point out the almost hopelessness of this in their paper Since the detection and geolocalization of potential viral outbreaks are based on suitable keywords clearly linked to well-known symptoms, our approach cannot be directly used for the forecasting of otherwise unknown diseases. Indeed, the usage of the word pneumonia on Twitter could have served as a useful proper predictor only before pneumonia was publicly linked to COVID-19, and not at a time when news outlets and the public in general were already discussing it widely. Bummer. They point out that now that we know pneumonia is a symptom, once the news dies down, uh, then an algorithm might be able to catch a reoccurrence of COVID-19 in the future or some other disease in which we already know the symptoms. That said, I'm kind of surprised that they are not a little more optimistic about the possibility of this research leading to early detection of future unknown diseases. Like, we may not know the symptoms of the next big pandemic or other public health crisis, but with enough computing power and a well-written algorithm, we could certainly set up a system that detects unusual amounts of activity on any of a number of possible symptoms. For instance, we could have been monitoring pneumonia because even if COVID-19 never existed, an increase in posts about pneumonia could clue us in to possible influenza outbreaks. So why not have a system in place that monitors for things like pneumonia or other stuff like, I don't know, numb fingers or headaches or any number of other words and phrases? Filter out news and memes and you might be left with an indicator when something has gone wrong somewhere. For instance, maybe some place has groundwater that's slowly being infected with fracking chemicals. The right algorithm could highlight a localized group of similar symptoms being talked about across social media sources. Of course, you would have to cross-check that with local news reports that might spur people to talk about these things or to think they have symptoms they don't, but that work could be done. It's possible. I know it's all a bit pie in the sky, like we'd need a government or large medical organization to pour the money and the time into building something like that, and for social media networks to share data and for someone to protect the privacy of social media users whose data is being scraped. We don't really have any of that right now. Um, And a million other logistical concerns that I'm not even going to be able to get into. But it's certainly feasible in a near future sci-fi utopia. And you know what? I'll take all of the positive thoughts I can get right now.